In the wilds across a vast wasteland lay a region that would one day become home to the grand kingdom of Hallownest, a tragic tale of light and darkness. Many ages before, deep underground, into the very bedrock of the tunnels was a civilization. The bugs here devoted their worship not to a lord, power or king, but to the very darkness itself, the Void. Even now, not a lot is known about this ancient civilization deep down in the abyss of the Void. What we do know is that these bugs were intelligent and expanded their reach into the tunnels and open caverns above. They discovered that soul animated and gave their bodies life, a powerful force that flowed through the very air itself. To contain and manipulate this substance, these ancient bugs constructed soul totems. Across the lands, their civilization created weapons through nailsmiths, their scholars recorded their history on arcane eggs, and some were believed to have weaponized the very void itself. Their constructions were magnificent, it was as if the rock itself possessed a will and adapted to the desire of the bugs that inhabited this region. Despite how grand this civilization became, one day it simply came to an end. Looking back, it is unknown what happened to this ancient civilization, but in their fall, Artifacts of their triumphs became a part of the land. The bodies of the largest inhabitants decayed and showed those who travelled through that a civilization once existed here. Deep down in the abyss, the void simply existed in a sea of darkness. And when there is darkness, there is also light to counter it. This greater world was large and home to many bugs with simple thoughts. There were, however, higher beings of great power. One of these was the Radiance. This giant moth was one of the most powerful creatures and she shone brightly. As a being of light, the Radiance became an instant enemy to the Void. As a higher being, the Radiance had natural incredible abilities. On the land of this fallen civilization, the Radiance brought into existence a new intelligent species. Having been created by a higher being, the Moth tribe worshipped the Radiance and her light. They basked in it. The Radiance was a beacon of light. Alongside her ability to create life and light, she also taught the moth how to interact with, influence and manipulate essence. Essence powered dreams, and in turn, the entirety of the dream realm. A realm separated from the physical world by a veil. Now, the expanse of dreams once consisted of dreams and nightmares. However, at one point in time, these realms were split. Under the guidance of the Radiance, the Moth Tribe discovered the countless realms of dreams. Each one was formed from the memories of the living and the dead. An entire realm could be formed from thought and will alone. From the bugs, plants and gods of the land, the dream realms were home to almost anything that the imagination could form, all powered by essence that floated like dust in these powerful realms. As for the nightmare realm, it was also powered by a sort of essence, flame. These realms were similar but darker in nature to the dream realm. Controlled by the Nightmare Heart, another higher being, troops were sent out to ruined lands to collect Nightmare Essence flames to fuel the Nightmare Heart. In their devotion and worship of the Radiance, the Moth Tribe explored Essence, Soul and Dreams. In this exploration, they created the Dream Nail. This powerful nail was incredible. The moths pierced the veil between the waking and the dream worlds. They extracted soul and essence from living creatures. 
They used the dream world to essentially teleport across vast distances with dream gates, and they even entered the minds of the bugs around them to discover their darkest secrets. Yet, some minds were too powerful to penetrate. These dream walkers have been crafted with a light brighter than essence, and under the Radiance's lead, they learned how to shape dreams. The light also kept the void at bay. The Radiance had used her light to create life. She had offered them knowledge of and access to the dream realms. All she wanted in return was their worship. And yet, the Radiance was not the only higher being that had come to this land. To the west, the giant slug Un dreamt of a world of luscious leaves, luxurious bushes, swirling vines, lakes of acid and green children to walk amongst the forests. As a higher being of light, her dream transformed the barren, rocky caverns of this bleak land into lush chambers full of vegetation and lakes. From her dream also walked the Moskin into the physical world, the green children of Un. These once empty caverns, chambers, tunnels and basins became home to the life, soul and essence of Green Path. Within, the Green Children of Un, just like the Moth Tribe of the Radiance, worshipped their god and erected temples to honour and worship her, one of which was constructed at the Lake of Un, a site that the higher being communed with her children. Each plant and bug, no matter how big or small, was important to the Moskin, for they had been created within the mind of Un. Because of this, the Moskin tribe were very territorial and protective of Green Path and those who sought to explore it. To the southeast of Green Path lay the Fungal Wastes. It was in the southern part of this region that the Mantis tribe formed a village. The Mantis did not appear to worship any higher being and were completely self-sufficient. Led by their Mantis lords, the youngest of this tribe were encouraged to kill to prove their strength to claim their place in the tribe. The Mantis valued honour and tradition. They did not like outsiders, but did at least respect one if they engaged in an honourable fight. If their challenger died, they died. However, if they lived, they were offered freedom to explore the village. The Mantis' ability to defend themselves did come in useful. To the west of their village, Deepness became home to the Spider Tribe, and later the Weaver Tribe, who had travelled from a faraway land. Many speculated this to be Falu. At this moment, this is just speculation. The inhabitants of Deep Nest were arguably the most intelligent species of this land. The weavers crafted stories, shields, and spells on their looms as they recorded their history on spools. Their village was meticulously crafted by the arachnids who created houses of silk that hung across a deep cavern. It was in these that their king and queen monitored the population, and their midwife helped birth children. It was also here that the arachnids plotted to expand their reach by force across the land. The issue they had was that the mantis blocked their access to it. The entirety of this land had once worshipped the void, and after that civilization had fallen, many more had popped up and claimed their regions. From the distant village of Deepnest, the Mantis Lords of Mantis Village, to the Moskin of Greenpath, the mysterious snail shamans that manipulated soul into power spells, the dreamwalkers of the moth, and even the emptiness of the abyss, this land had awoken once again. Across it, there were also simple-minded bugs without true thoughts. They just wandered in the darkness. As the ages passed, these colonies lived on and thrived in their homes. 
Within Green Path, however, the Moskin noticed that Un had started to fade away and her interactions with them reduced in number. She promised that one day she would call for them to return to the dream they had come from. Until then, they just had to be patient. To the east of Green Path, another species came to the Verdant region. This was a family of hunters who even hunted each other for fun. Over their time there, the family moved away until only one remained, alone in his small area of Green Path. As it burrowed through the mountains of the wasteland, a worm finally stopped and settled. The worm were, just like Un and the Radiance, higher beings of light. This worm looked at the land ahead and saw what it could become. Of the many abilities of this god species, the worm could see the future to an extent. He saw that this land could become a grand kingdom if he let it. The land was home to many bugs of sentient mind, but there were many others that clawed in the darkness, unaware of anything, just bugs. He would become their king. In order to do this, the worm entered a process of metamorphosis and shed his large form. He became small, just like them. In this new form, the worm went by the title of the Pale King, as his shell transformed the kingdom's edge into an ashen wasteland as it decayed. The Pale King was a being of power, and as he looked at the land ahead of him, he claimed it as the Kingdom of Hallownest. The worm in general had incredible abilities. Not only could the king see the future and pull lesser bugs into his thrall, but he also formed a beacon that instilled the simple minded bugs of Hallownest with sentience and intelligence. Under his beacon, the bugs of Hallownest saw the pale king as the leader, ruler, and the higher being who had created everything within Hallownest. Yet, an issue arose for those who sought to leave the kingdom. For if they moved too far away from Hallownest, they would relinquish the precious mind that the king had granted them. For the bugs already with Sapiens, their time in Hallownest, for the most part, would become a distant, foggy memory. By the Pale King's side was the White Lady, another higher being of Root, under the leadership of Worm and Root, Hallownest would thrive. Their union was solidified with the King's Soul, a charm with two halves that, when combined, produced unlimited soul from the very air. In the depths of the land, just above the abyss, the palace grounds were constructed, and within, so too was the White Palace. This place became home to the Pale King, White Lady, and those chosen to be their royal retainers. The King was fascinated with the void below, and wanted to form the entire kingdom of Hallownest above the palace. Void was an interesting and mysterious force. To keep it calm, the king had a lighthouse constructed within the abyss and ordered one of his subjects to keep the light active at all times. With Void passive in this state, the king had some of the substance brought to his palace so that he could experiment with and explore it in his workshop. From his work, the king created several Void constructs. He filled heavy white armor with the substance, for Void had no will and no mind to think. In this state, it did what the king commanded. These armored Void entities were named King's Molds and were stationed within and across the palace to defend it. The Pale King stayed within his palace and rarely left. But from here, he had a lot of work to do. The Bugs of Hallownest had sworn their loyalty to their king. He had promised them that Hallownest would last eternal, and he truly believed it would. 
Although many bugs had woken up and gained the ability to think, feel, and act of their own accord, many of the bugs of this land already had these abilities. In an attempt to develop a working grand kingdom, the Pale King reached out to the tribes that existed within the borders of his hollow nest to unite the land. Each tribe could offer something valuable. Over the ages, the Moth tribe had still worshipped the Radiance and her light, but several turned their backs on her and chose to worship the Pale King instead when he asked. For their place in Hallow Nest, the Moth offered their ability to communicate with the Dream Realm. In doing so, they became the caretakers of the dead. Within the resting grounds and spirits glade, the moths granted the bugs of Hallow Nest a place of sanctuary, peace and serenity before and after death. They conducted rituals, communed with the departed, and helped those who grieved accept their loss through the manipulation of essence. To the west, the hive-minded mushrooms of the fungal waste saw the king's power of foresight as a form of protection, so they accepted his offer to join the kingdom. The Moskin of Greenpath waited for the call of Un to return to the dream, yet while territorial, they welcomed the Pale King and allowed him to have roads constructed across their land. However, they also left a warning. If any strayed from the king's road, they would face the laws of Un. The Pale King also asked for more from the Moskin. He and the White Lady liked the luscious region of Greenpath so much that they decided to claim the entire southern region. The Queen's Garden still resembled the dream that Un had created it from, but as a retreat for the Queen it was adapted with greenhouses and statues of royalty. As this area had been annexed from Greenpath, it was heavily guarded and only those chosen by the king or queen were allowed access. While several of the tribes within the borders of Hallownest had agreed to become a part of the kingdom, there were others who refused to cooperate. The Weaver and Spider Tribe of Deepnest had no interest in becoming a part of the Pale King's Kingdom. They wanted the land for themselves. The Mantis Tribe also declined the Pale King's offer to join the Kingdom of Hallownest. In this case, however, a deal was made between the two parties. The Pale King offered the Mantis Lords their sovereignty if they kept the aggressive population of Deep Nest sealed inside, in which they agreed. There was also the Bees of the Hive to the east. Their hive had been constructed within the kingdom's borders, but their queen, Queen Vesper, decided to keep out of the problems and politics of a growing kingdom as the hive sealed their entrances. Although some had chosen not to become a part of the Kingdom of Hallow Nest, the Worms Beacon did bring travellers from other lands and they came upon the relics of an ancient civilization, one of which was found to the north of the Kingdom's Edge. Several travellers discovered the large remains of an ancient beast. It was inside that they formed the Colosseum of Fools, an arena of entertainment where the strongest warriors fought trials. Having pulled together the tribes of Hallow Nest, the Pale King and White Lady watched as the rest of the kingdom flourished in the caverns above the White Palace. King's Pass welcomed new bugs to the Kingdom of Hallow Nest with a large bridge that led to the small town of Dirtmouth. Although modest, it offered access to the crossroads below, stores that sold interesting wares, easy access to the top of Crystal Peak, a graveyard for the fallen, and even the opportunity to meet Confessor Gigi, a powerful entity who had the ability to manipulate Void in return for a rancid egg. 
The creation of the crossroads below Dirtmouth allowed the kingdom to pulse with life as the bugs explored the towns and cities. Hallowness thrived in trade, refuge and adventure, while Sol was regarded as a great energy source. Hallowness relied mostly on the crystals of Crystal Peak to power the kingdom. In doing so, it meant that bugs were hired to mine these purple gems with the help of Glimbax and Shardmites to help them transport the heavy loads. For those who followed the Pilgrim's Way through the verdant wilds of Greenpath and the Fungal Wastes, they would reach the heart of the kingdom, Hallownest's capital city. A place in which they were promised to share in the city's glory, their wishes would be granted and their truths revealed. During Hallownest's golden age, this city went by one name, but it has been lost to time. Due to many of the events to come, it would later become known as the City of Tears. The heart of Hallownest was huge. The western quarter housed the common bug, and the east housed the more influential, wealthier and royal. Upon their entrance to the city, the pilgrims would have noticed the grand spires that darted into the peak of this cavern. The statues of powerful knights, the guardians who protected the civilians, and they would have heard the melodic sounds of Marissa the songstress from the Pleasure House. The city even had a pretty advanced water structure that ran underground. These royal waterways dealt with the city's waste, and for the items that fell down into these sewers, they slowly collected together and formed a giant pit of junk. Back within the city, the Soul Sanctum offered the Scholars of Soul the ability to explore and understand just what the substance was capable of as they used soul totems and containers to store it, just as the lost ancient civilization had done ages before. In the highest spire of the city, Lurian the Watcher observed the entire city with his telescope. He was one of the most loyal to his king, and as a high-ranking member of the kingdom, he was even granted Watcher Knights to protect him in his role. As the capital of Hallownest, various materials were imported in from the surrounding regions, some of many were silks, artwork and fabrics. While so many resources came in, only few were sent out. This kingdom thrived on their currency of Geo, adventure and many even traded in charms, powerful accessories that contained a spark of power woven into their very cores. They offered those who wore them the ability to change how they interacted with the world, enhance strength, the potential to manipulate soul at will, to enhance and extend their lives, and protection were just some of many adaptations. Charms were highly sought after, but they were very limited. Each one was unique. There may have been many ways to craft these items, but the darkest secret of the kingdom was that they formed from a dying wish. The Pale King's actions had formed a large civilization that spanned for miles and miles through several territories and biomes, yet he spent the most of his time in the White Palace to offer their worship to him. The citizens of Hallownest fashioned king's idols so that they could physically thank and revere him, even if it was from a distance. The king's knights were also given ornate seals as symbols of their service to the kingdom. Every bug had a role in this melting pot of culture. While the grubs could tunnel through the caverns as they awaited metamorphosis, not every citizen had this ability. To navigate the kingdom, the citizens of Hallownest could have travelled by foot through Kingdom's Way, and a lot did. The king did, however, implement other forms of travel. Hallownest was home to the Stag Beetle. These large bugs loved to run, and with Hallownest as their home, they ran through the long, empty tunnels of the land. To give the stags a role in the kingdom, stag stations were opened up across the land. 
In essence, if a bug required transportation to the other end of Hallow Nest, they simply rang a bell and a stag would be there. These stations opened up the kingdom even more. From Dirtmouth, Greenpath, the Fog Canyon, the capital city, and even Deepnest, the stags of Hallow Nest navigated the long tunnels for the citizens. A station was also constructed in Queen's Gardens, however, only few were permitted to utilise this path. The stags loved their role in Hallow Nest, and after a long day of work, they returned to the Stag Nest, their home and place of birth. It was here that they swapped stories about interesting passengers, spoke of new tunnels they had discovered, and raised their young. The stag stations were immensely important. Even still, the king also implemented another system to traverse Hallow Nest a tram system. In their construction of the tram line, the tracks ran from the resting grounds, the crossroads, Kingdom's Edge, and the basin close to where the White Palace had been constructed. The workers did also attempt to manufacture a line that ran through Deep Nest, but the Spider Tribe killed anyone who stepped on their land. As a result, the construction of this line was abandoned. With a dream to craft the perfect nail, and nails for the land's fighters, a nailsmith set up a workshop just outside of the capital city. Even in a mostly safe kingdom like Hallow Nest, there were still dangers. To create this perfect weapon, the smith sought out a pale ore, a rare ore connected somehow to the higher pale beings of the land. With their weapons, warriors came to the ultimate Nailmaster Sly for training in the art of combat. Oro, Amato, and Shio were just three known students. The Fog Canyon became home to one of Hallow Nest's greatest minds, Monomon the Teacher. In this region, thick with fog and cackling electricity, this large jellyfish had her archive constructed. It was here that she researched the land, its inhabitants, and stored the kingdom's knowledge. As a teacher, she also offered her knowledge to her students, one of which was Quirrell. This golden age of Hallow Nest truly offered a place for every bug, creature, and traveller. It was because of the culture and traditions the Pale King had perfectly crafted that the five great knights of Hallow Nest were revered. Zemur had travelled from a land serene and brought with her the delicate flower, immensely fragile flowers that contained a power that, even now, few understand. Isma was regarded as a kind warrior, and had some connection to the acid lakes of Hallow Nest. Although unconfirmed, this suggests that she could have had some sort of connection to Un. Hegemol was the largest of the Great Five, and was known to make his friends laugh. Dryer was the fiercest of the warriors, and then there was Ogrim, the knight who took his oath to the kingdom the most seriously. While the kingdom thrived, just outside of the borders, the tribe of Deep Nest suffered a great loss. The ruler died, and control of Deep Nest was left to their partner, Hera. While only a common beast, the weavers and spiders of Deep Nest still regarded her as their queen, and under her rule, they attempted to move on from their loss. Under the worship and the leadership of the Pale King, a barren cavern of simple bugs had transformed into a grand civilization with doctors, adventurers, singers, poets, traders, and so many more. Over these ages, the King's guiding light had helped them thrive, but his influence had also extinguished another. The Moth Tribe had initially turned their backs on their creator upon the arrival of the Worm, and over this time, they had forgotten her. The Radiance, however, would not be forgotten. 
The ancient light of the Radiance had been forgotten by the moths of Hallownest. In an attempt to make them and the rest of the population of the kingdom remember her, the Radiance entered their dreams. As they slept, the citizens dreamt of a burning light and she appeared to them. This light threatened to break their minds as it pulled the first victims into a deep slumber. When they awoke, they became feral and aggressive as they reverted back to the simple minds of their ancestors before the arrival and gift of sapience from the king. That was if they accepted the call of union she offered in these dreams. The majority of Hallownest dreamt of this forgotten light and the king urged his people to resist the forgotten light that plagued their dreams. As a result of these desperate attempts to be remembered and the king's orders to ignore and reject her, these dreams and the light manifested into an infection. Over his time in Hallownest, the Pale King had explored the void and understood that the Radiance threatened to destroy everything he had formed. He had to act. Interestingly enough, within Mantis Village, the Mantis were naturally immune to her call. The Radiance existed solely within the Dream Realm. So, the Pale King and White Lady formed a plan to completely remove her connection to the Waking World. The madness of the infection spread across the entire kingdom of Hallownest as the population declined quickly. To seal the Radiance and her influence away mentally and physically, the King turned to the Void. Only an entity a vessel with no mind to think, no will to break, and no voice to cry, born of God and Void could hold the Radiance. The Pale King had created several Void constructs to protect and maintain the kingdom over the ages. This one would just be harder to perfect. In a union of Worm and Root, the Pale King and White Lady had many children. Each one was birthed in the abyss where they died, were hollowed out, and then inhabited by void. The king and queen murdered what appeared to be thousands of their children in an attempt to create a pure vessel that could contain the radiance. To the king, no cost was too great to save his kingdom from the infection. The void shades of the abandoned children were left at the bottom of the abyss as the king sought out that one perfect vessel. And when the pure vessel eventually revealed itself, the king left the abyss with it and sealed the entrance behind him. His discarded children were simply left down there. The creation of this pure vessel had come at a great cost, but it was important to save the kingdom. The vessel, however, was just one part of the containment of the Radiance. As the king brought the pure vessel to the White Palace to raise it for its purpose, the king began the second stage of the plan. The pure vessel, when grown, would be sealed within the Temple of the Black Egg, but powerful seals had to be formed to keep it closed, to trap it inside. Seals that only three powerful dreamers would form if they entered an eternal sleep. Lurian the Watcher volunteered for this role out of loyalty to his king, and Monomon the Teacher of Fog Canyon also accepted this great responsibility. For the third and final seal, the Pale King reached out to Hera the Beast of Deepnest. Although her tribe had refused to become a part of Hallownest, the Radiance infection had also affected them. Even so, Hera had a request. Hera had lost her partner, but she desperately wanted a child. In a union between tribes, the Pale King gave Hera the Beast what she desired. Together, they created a child of God and the Beast. As Deepnest awaited the birth of their queen's spawn, the Pale King returned to the White Palace and spent time with the vessel, his child. 
Over this time, the vessel was seen by the population of Hallownest as their saviour that would seal away the Radiance, their Hollow Knight. Soon, the time came and the Hollow Knight was brought to the Temple of the Black Egg and it was chained within. In a ritual, the Radiance was summoned to the Knight's dream and as it had no will, no mind and no suffering, the light was trapped within. Across Hallownest, the dreamers prepared to complete their role in this plan. Monomon the teacher stored herself within her archives. As a dreamer, the power of this ritual already protected her to an extent. However, she also put in place another level of security. The teacher formed a connection between her mask and the container she would be placed in to dream. If someone or something did attempt to access her physical form, they would require her mask. A mask that she gave to her apprentice, Quirrell. To protect his teacher, Quirrell left Hallownest with the mask, and as he moved further away from the king's beacon, his memories of this crumbling kingdom faded away. Within the capital city, at the peak of the Watcher's Spire, Lurian the Watcher lay down and slept as his Watcher Knights protected the entrance to his body. Over in Deepnest, Hera the Beast and the Spider Tribe were overjoyed with the birth of their princess, Hornets. Hera was only able to spend a small amount of time with her child before she had to enter the Beast Den to also go to sleep. As the three dreamers went to sleep, they entered the dream realm and became seals on the Temple of the Black Egg. With the radiance sealed away, trapped within the Hollow Knight inside the Black Egg Temple, sealed by the dreamers, the kingdom breathed a sigh of relief. Many of the bugs went to the temple to pray, and a memorial fountain was constructed inside of the walls of the capital city. A structure to remind them of the great sacrifice that not only the Hollow Knight had made, but also the Dreamers. The creation of the Hollow Knight and sacrifice of the Dreamers to save the kingdom weighed heavily on the White Lady. It was her children that had been discarded in the abyss to find that one pure vessel. She felt shame for her role in this plan. To stop herself from the creation of future offspring, the White Lady travelled to the Queen's Gardens. With her powers of root, she bound herself to the ground. Unable to defend herself, Dryer of the Great Five Knights of Hallownest took an oath to stand watch of her queen and protect her from any harm. Despite everything the Pale King and the Dreamers had done to save the kingdom, even after the sacrifice of the Hollow Knight, the Radiance once again appeared in the dreams of the Bugs of Hallownest. The vessel had been pure upon its selection by the King. However, during its time in the White Palace, it had forged a connection with its father. An idea had been instilled, it had a mind, thoughts, and it had become impure. The order of the events during this period are murky. Regardless, none of them were good. The Moskin of Greenpath were mostly unaffected by the infection, but this aggressive attack on the kingdom did amplify their desire to be reunited with Un. The miners in Crystal Peak fell, some even merged with the crystals they mined and became mad and aggressive. The mushroom tribe of the fungal wastes that had once allowed pilgrims to traverse their land also became actively hostile against most they encountered. Alongside this, several spoke of a master herald that would signal age's end, a rumoured deity that had its own mind outside of the hive mind they shared, a mushroom that went by the name Mr. Mushroom. Reports showed that he travelled across Hallownest unhindered by the infection. As the death toll increased, the kingdom attempted to reduce the spread. 
The Spirit's Glade was sealed, and the capital city of Hallow Nest closed its gates so that no one could enter and no one could leave. The tram and stag stations were shut down. In doing this, the stags slowly fell into isolation. Without a bell to be heard to signal them, they were also forgotten about. Because of this, every region within Hallow Nest became isolated. The rock base of the cavern above the capital city cracked, and with it, the waters of the cavern of Blue Lake dripped from above. This gave the capital city the name it would be remembered for, the City of Tears. Although the gates had been closed, the Radiance still wiped out large chunks of the population within. As for their history and records, the parchments of spider silk became ineligible. In these dire times, there were some who still had hope. The Soul Master of the Soul Sanctum saw in his dreams that the cure for this infection could be attained through pure focus, an ability granted through the consumption and manipulation of soul. This dream, however, was a nasty trick by the Radiance. The Pale King ordered that this line of thought be abandoned, but the Soul Master could not understand why his leader refused to at least try to stop the Moth of Light. This Master of Soul believed that if they could use the substance that animated their very bodies, it would help them defeat the infection. So he ignored the Pale King. Within the Soul Sanctum, the Soul Master and his scholars hoarded the soul totems of the kingdom and slowly became intoxicated by its power. The intensity of this substance deformed many of them as it mutated their body into mistakes. The Soul Master, however, did retain his shape and he stayed in the Soul Sanctum. Close by, one member of the upper class of the city watched as the population was driven into madness. Emelita had been cast out by those she had once called friends, and she reveled in their madness. She locked herself in a tower and watched the chaos unfold. Emelita enjoyed the show. The madness of the infection simply evaded her. Over in the Mantis village, their natural immunity allowed them to ride out the initial infection as they dealt with other issues. The daughter of one of their leaders had entered into a relationship with an outsider. This was not just any outsider, it was the Mur of the Great Five Knights of Hallow Nest. The Mantis leaders ordered that this relationship be put to an end, but it did not stop the connection they had for each other. This natural immunity to the Radiance, for the most part, was fantastic for the Mantis tribe. There were some, however, who believed if they chose to worship her light, they would be gifted with power. Unfortunately for the Mantis, one of their four leaders fell to this lure, branded the Traitor Lord. This leader turned on his sisters. In response, the sisters forced those who had fallen for the Radiance's light out of Mantis Village. Without a home, the Mantis traitors claimed a new territory within Queen's Gardens, an act of aggression not only against Un, but also the White Lady. These traitors did attempt to dominate this land, but they were met by the power of Dryer. Ultimately, she fell to the constant waves of Mantis attacks in defense of her queen, but the traitors also fell to the infection as they became simple-minded creatures. Although Dryer had given her life for the White Lady, this higher being of Root had grown so much since she had settled on this land. She was completely unaware that her protector had fallen. Interestingly enough, even some of the Mosskin turned their backs on Un and actively chose to worship the Radiance. The Moss Prophet and their followers believed Hallownest would be born again and united in the Radiance's blazing image. To worship her, they called out to the Moth in the Moss Chapel. Hallownest had fallen so far in such a short amount of time. The streets filled with bodies, many bugs reverted to a mind without sapience, and the regions of this kingdom separated. 
the Pale King's vision for a grand civilization had failed. Within the hive, the bees had lived independently away from the kingdom of Hallownest, but after their queen grew too large for the hive and died, they too fell to the lure of the radiance after the infection seeped into their home and took over. In an action that surprised the few that still lived, the Pale King pulled the White Palace from the physical realm and transported it into the Dream Realm along with his followers and servants. In these awful times, the Traitor Lord's daughter died and was buried in Queen's Gardens. Upon the notification of this news, her partner, Zamur, chose to renounce her duties as a great knight, entered the resting grounds and became the Grey Mourner. Within the royal waterways, Isma entered a grove. Inside, she passed away to unknown means. Just outside, Ogrim defended her grove and waited for her. As for the fifth and final great knight of Hallownest, Hegemol, his fate is unknown. His armor was stolen as he slept by a maggot desperate to defend its kin. After that, no one knows. During this entire period, deep down in the abyss, some of the discarded vessels managed to climb out of their tomb. The king had sealed the entrance to this place, but they discovered a secret way out. With access to the kingdom, some stayed to explore it, while one left it entirely. With the king gone and the kingdom having entered a stasis to keep it eternal, and the majority of the inhabitants of the kingdom having fallen to the plague of the Radiance, Hallownest fell into ruin. Her influence had taken their minds, but still, the physical infection stayed inside of the Black Egg Temple. In Deepnest, Hornet was raised by the weavers and midwife in her mother's absence. She knew her mother had sacrificed herself for Deepnest, and as she grew up, Hornet explored Hallownest and protected the ruins from scavengers. While the stags slowly died out as they waited for a bell to be rung to signal the return of the passengers, there were some who survived the infection. The nailsmith who had set up his workshop just outside of the City of Tears had, in a way, attained a sort of pure focus as he spent his attention on the forging of a pure nail, a goal he would continue to attempt. The ultimate nail master Sly hung up his nail and set up a store in Dirtmouth. He realized that the collection of Geo was more important than combat. To get more of it, he sold the treasures and charms of the Fallen Kingdom to those who passed by. His students also moved across Hallownest. Oro relocated to Kingdom's Edge, Mato moved to the Howling Cliffs, and Shio made Greenpath his home and pursued art. For the few who remained of the Moth Tribe, they prophesied someone that would wield a dream nail and collect all of the essence and memories of Hallownest, the wielder. Yet this chosen one never arrived and the tribe slowly died off until only a single seer remained to tend to the resting grounds alone. The King's Pass had once allowed those who travelled through the Howling Cliffs access to Dirtmouth and the Greater Kingdom. Over time and without maintenance, the connecting bridge collapsed. Dirtmouth slowly faded away as the residents within and the few who passed through entered the well into the forgotten crossroads of the kingdom below. They sought wealth, glory and adventure, but only few returned. The City of Tears had become a shell of its former self, but it was not completely dead. The Tower of Love was home to something interesting. A void being named the Collector. The origin of this entity is shrouded mostly in mystery. Why was it called the Collector? Well, it collected objects and, most notably, the grubs of Hallownest and placed them inside of glass jars to preserve or protect them. On a more interesting note, the key to its home in the Tower of Love was later discovered on the body of a bug that had died. 
this was not a normal death. It appeared that Void had destroyed this bug from the inside as streams of the substance fell like tears from its face. In the bug's dying moments, it had thought, too long spent together, we become as one. The Void entity and the bug had some sort of relationship, but what it truly meant is unknown. Deep underground in the abyss, the Void called out to the Lightkeeper appointed by the Pale King. It called to him to turn off the light. Within the White Palace, the Pale King also passed away. It is unknown how this occurred, but his followers inside this dream realm still awaited his return. Hallownest was home to a long history of chaos and ruin. This fallen kingdom, however, was just one of many. The population of the Land of Storms had once worshipped the Gods of Thunder and the Gods of Rain. Their gods had either abandoned them or died. They sought out the gods and they went out into the wasteland to find more. The Godseekers had a mask that allowed them to focus their thoughts. In doing so, they created an entire world with the shared mind in the dream realm, God Home. Inside, they hoped to elevate and eventually attune their minds to commune with the gods of the world with a Godseeker device through ritual combat. On their journey, a Godseeker picked up what lingered of the power of the Pale King, and it arrived in Hallownest unaware that he had moved on. However, upon the Godseeker's arrival, it was locked inside of a cocoon and dropped into the junk pit of the Royal Waterways. How and why this happened is unknown, yet while trapped physically, the Godseekers lived comfortably within Godhome. The Kingdom of Hallownest had essentially become a giant graveyard. Spirits of warriors waited for explorers to pass by them, yet some parts of the kingdom were alive. The strongest fighters across the land travelled towards Hallownest to compete in the Colosseum of Fools. Every one of them attempted to become the champion of the Colosseum. Despite their dreams of greatness, many died during their trials, and their corpses were dropped into the chasm below. Even after the Lord Fool's death, the fighting continued. As the ages passed, many who dreamt of greatness took on the God Tamer. Two new fighters were Tiso and the Little Fool. In the fading town of Dirtmouth, the retired nailmaster Sly fell into a dream and began to wander the forgotten crossroads, a world he had left behind long before. This was interesting. It was as if something deep within Hallownest had brought it back to life, and with it, new travellers made their way towards the kingdom. The oldest resident of the town, Elderbug had grown up in an age after the closure of the stag stations and fall of the world below. Still, he knew of the dangers in the well. Dangers that acclaimed so many that had entered and never returned. Within the City of Tears, a relic collector set up a store away from the dead. Lem was fascinated by the historical artifacts of Hallownest during its Golden Age. He was also intrigued by the arcane eggs of the civilization that had occupied the land before the Kingdom of Hallownest had even formed. As Hornet traversed across this fallen kingdom to protect her mother and father's ruins from scavengers, she also sensed something in the air, a new wave of the infection that reanimated the bodies of the fallen into aggressive husks. Hornet was mostly alone after the Weavers of Deepnest left Hallownest to return to their homeland after they also sensed the return of the infection. From the Howling Cliffs, to the Black Egg Temple, to the cast-off shell of the Pale King's original worm form at the Kingdom's Edge, 
Hornet watched as the kingdom was filled with dangers. These bugs simply wandered the region in which they had passed away. They retained their muscle memory of their roles during the kingdom's heyday, but the infection also clouded their minds and made them aggressive upon even a simple interaction. The miners of Crystal Peak mined, the guards protected the streets, and husks wandered the forgotten crossroads, all in the Radiance's haze. Still, those of sound mind and new arrivals delved into these ruins as the infection brought it back to life. In a deserted village, there was one mender bug who had survived the entire infection, and he kept working. When he discovered a broken sign, he fixed it. As he worked, he wrote of his accomplishments in his diary. To the east of his village, another bug ran a charm store. Salubra appeared to be completely unaware that the kingdom had fallen. She thought maybe business had just gotten a little quiet lately. Amongst those who sought glory, Zote the Mighty arrived in Hallownest. This place reminded him of home. Zote believed names had power, that was why he had called his nail the Life Ender. Yet, Zote's image of himself as a mighty warrior was not the case. He struggled against the most basic of foes as he wandered the caverns alone. A married couple, Cornifer and his wife, Eselda, also arrived in Hallownest. Cornifer wanted to explore the world, and he did as he took on the task to map the kingdom, as his wife set up a store in Dirtmouth. Within Fog Canyon, an explorer also discovered a great way to earn Geo from the passing adventurers. Millibel knew bugs and how to manipulate them. In the safer region of the infected jellyfish inhabited misty caverns of Hallownest, Millibel set up a bank to store the geo of those who wanted to protect their wealth. But all was not what it seemed. Millibel planned to run away with all the geo she managed to extract from her marks. In the neighbouring region of the Fungal Wastes, Leg Eater either lived there or moved there to set up his own charm store. Leg Eater was blind, but had an amazing sense of smell. He believed that if he earned enough Geo, he would become a king. It was here the bug created charms, but how he did this is unknown. On a quest of bravery, a cicada warrior sought to challenge Hallownest's mighty, terrifying beasts. Cloth had the best intention to die in an intense, climactic battle with her club so that she could be reunited with Nola, her partner who had passed away. But the creatures of Hallownest scared her, and sometimes she hid. Halnest was alive once again with new adventurers, explorers, and the husks of the departed. Within the Temple of the Black Egg, the Hollow Knight grew weaker and the Radiance's influence on the land grew stronger. Halonest, however, was still protected by the seal of the Dreamers. Many of the vessels that had escaped their fate at the bottom of the abyss had explored the ruins of Hallownest. Many had been lured and brutally killed by the terrifying, shape-shifting Nosk of Deepnest. There was also another vessel who had returned to Hallownest after it had heard a call. As of now, it is unknown what called it, the Radiance or the Hollow Knights. Regardless, this vessel, the Knight, traversed King's Pass and arrived in Dirtmouth. It met Elderbug and was told of the Grand Kingdom below, a kingdom that had become a myth. On its path, the Knight encountered Cornifer as he mapped out the Forgotten Crossroads. It fought with the False Knight that wore Hegemol's armor. After it met a Snail Shaman, it learned how to focus Soul into powerful magical strikes. It even reopened a stag station and discovered what remained of this species that had once allowed Hallownest to thrive. Sadly, this stag was the last of its kind, and over all of these years alone, it had forgotten the location of the stag nest. 
With its first passenger in ages, it asked the knight to reopen more stations as it travelled across Hallownest and ring the bell in each so that it would hopefully remember the location of its home. Hornet knew of the sacrifice the dreamers had made. She also watched from afar as this vessel explored her kingdom. On a trip to the Howling Cliffs, Hornet encountered Quirrell. He too had felt the call of Hallownest in his dreams. Dreams of winding roads, misted caverns, drowning cities, and a door with something that called to him just beyond. Hornet saw Quirrell as just another explorer that had come to desecrate her kingdom. In a short battle, Hornet noticed that the mask Quirrell wore was important. Something had called him here. With the belief his journey into Hallownest was significant, the Warrior of Deepnest returned to her kingdom to watch over the night, or as she called it, Little Ghost. In Green Path, Hornet looked over the body of a dead vessel, but she was interrupted by the knight. She warned it to come no closer, that she had seen it as it had crept through the undergrowth, and that she knew why it had come to Hallernest. She would not allow it to break the dreamer's seals. Despite Hornet's amazing ability to wield a needle and thread, the knight defeated her in combat. As Hornet fled, the knight picked up the Mothwing cloak from the body of the vessel. This would be just one of the many items and upgrades the vessel would acquire on its path. The dreamers had watched from the dream realm as the plan to save Hallownest had essentially failed. Over these ages, they had watched it fall as explorers had come and gone. However, they were curious about the arrival of this vessel. From their realm, Lurian the Watcher, Monomon the Teacher, and Hera the Beast projected their minds into the physical realm and spoke to the knight. They asked if it sought to break the seals. Lurian ordered the knight to stop what it had started and leave them to sleep in peace. Despite their request, the knight continued on and found its way to a statue of the dreamers in the resting grounds. To protect the vessel, the dreamers lay sleeping, Monomon the teacher in her archive surrounded by fog and mist. Lurian the Watcher in his spire, looking over the city. Hera the Beast, in her den, amidst the deep darkness beyond the kingdom. Through their devotion, Hallownest lasts eternal. It had been through the Pale King's plan that Hallownest had entered a period of stasis. The darkness and stillness of Void appeared to perpetuate one long night. The kingdom was still there, but frozen in a state of ruin, eternal. Lurian believed that if the Dreamer's seals were broken, the Radiant's light would bring with it dawn, and with it, the complete collapse of Hallownest. Lurian wanted Hallownest to remain as it was. He was loyal to his king, and his king wanted Hallownest to last eternal. The dreamers also did know that the Hollow Knight had grown so much weaker over this long period. Various binding seals had been crafted inside the egg, but they would not be strong enough to stop the Radiance. Lurian had to keep the dreamers' seals active. To stop the night, the dreamers pulled the vessel from Hallownest into the dream realm. It was here that it found itself trapped in a space between body and soul. The dreamers had displayed their ability to manipulate the dream realm, but they were not the only ones in Hallownest that knew how to travel between worlds. Within the resting grounds, the last moth of Hallownest discovered the vessel. In her dream form, the seer guided the knight towards a dream nail. It was with this that it pierced the veil between worlds and returned to Hallownest. This seer had lost so much. On her own, over all of this time, she had still tended to the graves of the fallen. 
as she had completed her tasks. The seer felt immense remorse for the crimes of her tribe. They had turned their backs on the radiance that had given them life and light, and it was because of this that she had reacted so aggressively. The seer knew of the dreamers and the sacrifice of the Hollow Knight. She also knew how to help the knight complete its task to break the seals so that change could come to Hallownest. She did also have another agenda. If she could acquire enough essence, she could be one with the Radiance. The dream nail had dulled over time, but the essence it needed to be fully restored flowed around everywhere. Within the whispering root trees, the warriors who had passed on and the bugs, anything that could dream was a source of essence. It was with this ancient moth artifact that it would be able to enter the dreams of the dreamers and inside destroy them and their seals. Over its journey, the knight explored the many stunning, haunted regions of Hallownest. It helped pull back Sly from the infection of Hallownest in an abandoned village. It also helped Bretta with the same ailment within the fungal wastes. In Crystal Peak, the knight met Myla, a miner who had travelled to the region to search for treasure. Her singing could be heard from the entrance of this cavern. As long as she did not fall asleep, she would be okay. Mila was happy and excited to explore the secrets of Crystal Peak. She also invited the knight to visit her again. She liked its company, and she was sure it liked her singing. In the Mantis Village, the knight acquired the Mantis Claw and challenged the Mantis Lords to combat. Upon the survival of this deadly conflict, the Lords offered the knight access to Deep Nest and the honour and respect to traverse their region without issue. In Deep Nest, the knight was lured into the nest of Nosk, a shape-shifting monstrosity that had killed many of the vessel's siblings. The knight, however, was stronger and more fluid than the other vessels as it used its abilities to kill the beast. The infected spiders of Deep Nest were just as dangerous as the bugs of Hollow Nest. The knight delved into the dark, claustrophobic, web-covered tunnels of this region and discovered the distant village, a collection of homes made of silk that hung above a deep cavern. Upon its entrance, the vessel survived a trap and then discovered the first dreamer, Hera the Beast, protected by a seal in the beast's den. With the dream nail, the knight entered her dream and destroyed her within. The death of Hera the Beast inside of her dream also killed her physical form. This action had several effects across Hallownest. Hornet became the new queen of Deep Nest after the death of her mother, and the protection on the Temple of the Black Egg became much weaker after the removal of Hera's seal. The plague inside pushed against the edges of its prison, and the orange goo of the infection broke out into the forgotten crossroads as light seeds transformed the already aggressive corpses of Hallownest into deadly foes. When the knight returned to Crystal Peak, it did not hear the positive hums of Myla. She too, just like many others, had fallen to the infection. In her mind, she was commanded by the Radiance to kill the Empty One. She was a perfect soul driven mad. Further in, the knight fought the fallen and mutated bugs as it acquired the Crystal Heart, an energy core that allowed it to propel itself and fly. As the knight entered the City of Tears, it was met by Hornet at the Fountain Memorial. She had underestimated her half-sibling. It was a resilience born of two gods. She also offered some information. If it still wanted to continue on its journey, it should seek out the grave in Ash. 
The grave she referred to was that of the Pale King's original form of the worm at Kingdom's Edge. It was there that it was tested by Hornet once again in combat to see if it was strong enough to do what needed to be done to save Hallow Nest. Inside of the corpse of the worm, the knight acquired the king's brand. It essentially selected the knight as king of Hallow Nest and access to every region within. Back in the City of Tears, the knight climbed the Soul Sanctum, fought with the infected scholars inside, and even defeated the Soul Master. It was in this victory that it learned Desolate Dive, a powerful spell that allowed it to smash through the ground. The knight then climbed the Watcher's Spire, defeated the Watcher Knight, and came across the sleeping body of the second dreamer, Lurian the Watcher. Just as it had done with Hera, the knight entered the dream of this bug, so loyal to his king, and destroyed him. Interestingly enough, this dream realm was a little brighter than that of the last dreamer, a sign that the Radiance's influence was getting stronger, a new dawn was on the way. Having destroyed two of the Dreamer's seals, the kingdom became more alive than it had been for many, many years. In the basin of Hallow Nest, the knight fought with a vessel which had been infected by light seeds. Further in, it picked up the monarch wings, wings of ethereal matter that granted the knight the power to jump higher. In the royal waterways, the little ghost discovered Ogrim. He defended the grove Isma had entered and not returned, and in his time alone, he had crafted statues of his friends. With limited material in the sewers of Hallow Nest, this once white defender had become the dung defender, as he had used the vast quantity of the waste of Hallow Nest in his creations. Further in, the vessel navigated Isma's grove and found her body. The cause of her death is unknown, but she did make a wish. This had created a charm, Isma's tear, that gave the knight the protection to swim through the acid lakes of Hallow Nest without harm. Deeper into the royal waterways, the knight encountered Tuck, a scavenger bug who searched for someone, someone she believed had something to apologise for. Who the person Tuck searched for is unknown, however it is likely she sought out Boone, another scavenger bug who was sighted close to the Howling Cliffs. Within the abyss, the place it and its kin had been discarded and hollowed out by the void. It was here that it reactivated the lighthouse and calmed the void as it attained the Shade Cloak. A cloak formed of void that offered the knight the power to traverse the void. Over its short time in Hallow Nest, the knight had grown so much stronger. Within the Howling Cliffs, an acolyte of the Grim Troop had died before it could light the Nightmare Lantern, a powerful device that summoned the troop. Hallow Nest was exactly what they fed off, a fallen kingdom full of nightmare essence. The knight discovered the body of this creature and it lit the lantern. In doing so, the Grim Troop travelled from the Nightmare Realm and set up their tents within Dirtmouth. As this had happened, their leader, Grim, sent Grimkin into Hallow Nest to collect the nightmare essence of the ruined kingdom. Upon the knight's return to Dirtmouth, it entered the tent of the Grim troop leader and was asked if it wanted to participate in the ritual. Over the following hours, the knight travelled with a Grim child, appointed by Grim, and fed the nightmare essence harvested by the Grimkin to the Grim Child. The troop leader watched as the Grim Child grew stronger and stronger. This was important to the survival and the everlasting cycle of the nightmare heart. When the Grim Child had absorbed enough nightmare essence, the next stage of this ritual would begin. The Nightmare King Grim would be killed inside the Nightmare Realm. As a result, the Grim Child would feed on the energy, become host to the Nightmare Realm, and then become the new Nightmare King. 
This was a cycle that had occurred for countless years. The knight, however, had a choice. If it followed through with the ritual, then the Grimchild would absorb the Nightmare Essence and become the new host of the Nightmare Realm. If the knight instead destroyed the Nightmare Lantern in Hallow Nest, it would force the travelling troop to leave and seek out another ruined kingdom. In doing this, one of their followers, Brum, would be able to remove the mask that had enslaved him to the Grim Troop. Brum would remember who he was. Nim. With just one more dreamer to go and powerful abilities in its hands, the knight travelled to Fog Canyon. The archives of Monomon the Teacher were filled with aggressive jellyfish, but none of them were as dangerous as a beast Monomon had charged to protect her chamber, Umu. <laughs> the issue was that Umu had also twisted to the corruption. To the knight's luck, Quirrell also returned to the archives after he had explored Hallow Nest in an attempt to remember this kingdom. Quirrell weakened the beast as the knight struck it. As they approached Monomon, Quirrell revealed the teacher's mask and removed the additional layer of protection. Inside of the dream realm of Monomon, the knight noticed just how bright the realm had become. The Radiance had become so much stronger since the death of the other two dreamers. Monomon knew what the knight sought to do and welcomed it its actions going forward to hopefully save the kingdom. The death of the final dreamer removed the protection of the Temple of the Black Egg, and with it, only the Hollow Knight remained. Quirrell had served Monomon for so long, and as the long night came to an end, and the Radiance prepared to unleash her light to create dawn, Quirrell felt himself age. The stasis of Hallow Nest was over. Quirrell had wondered since it had returned to Hallow Nest where the water that rained upon the City of Tears came from. As he explored, he discovered a blue lake in the cavern above the city and he felt at peace. It was here that he dug his nail into the ground and left. After this, he did pass away. How he did is unknown. During its time in Hallow Nest, the night had changed so much. It had given the nailsmith close to the City of Tears enough pale ore to craft the pure nail, his life's achievement. Having completed this goal, the nailsmith asked that it strike him down. If the knight refused to do so, the nailsmith was free to pursue something else. Speaking of Shio, the knight also learned nail art from Shio, Mato, and Oro to help it in its journey. The vessel had opened up enough stag stations across Hallow Nest for the last stag to remember the location of its nest. In a bittersweet moment, the last stag discovered the remains of those he had once travelled with. He was the last one here, but he also sensed that others just like him had journeyed out into other lands. With what appeared to be a cracked egg, the old stag had hope for his kind. With the amount of essence it had collected on its journey, the knight even pushed the dream nail to its full potential and woke it up. This collection of 2,400 essence was more than enough for the seer to truly repent for her and her tribe's crimes against the Radiance. In a moment of true remorse, the seer exploded into essence and became one with the Radiance. For an entity without a mind to think and no voice to cry suffering, it had changed Hallow Nest. It even angered Zot the Mighty as it rescued him from several compromising situations. Situations that Zot believed he could have survived without the help. Having destroyed the seals and helped whoever it had encountered in Hallow Nest, the knight had several options on what to do next. Each thread it traversed would have a very different effect on how its story would come to an end. 
having destroyed the dreamer's seals of Hallow Nest, the knight traversed the now heavily infested forgotten crossroads, then it entered the Black Egg Temple. It was here that the knight freed the Hollow Knight from the chains of this prison and a fight began. The Hollow Knight was plagued by the infection of the Radiance and it was in pain. With every ability, spell, nail art and nail upgrade this little ghost had discovered on its journey through Hollow Nest, it fought with and defeated the Hollow Knight. As the infection flowed out of the Hollow Knight, the Knight focused on it and absorbed it into itself. It became the new vessel of the Radiance, and with it, was chained and then sealed inside of the Black Egg Temple. It had become exactly what the Pale King had wanted, a pure vessel, the new Hollow Knight, trapped inside forever. No mind to think, no will to break, and no voice to cry suffering. Its sacrifice would keep Hallow Nest eternal. The Knight had made so many changes to Hallow Nest during its exploration of the ruined kingdom. However, it had one more region of this realm to discover. On a path through Queen's Gardens, the knight fought the infected traitor lords. If the knight had helped Cloth earlier on their journey, they would have been helped by her. Unfortunately, or fortunately in the case of Cloth, she was mortally wounded but still landed the final blow on the creature. Cloth quickly succumbed to her injuries and died as a result of a great battle, just like she had wanted finally reunited with Nola. Deeper into this brutal yet luscious region, the knight found the body of Dryer just outside of an entrance to the White Lady's Grove. Inside, the White Lady spoke to her child. She had felt the weakening of the Hollow Knight over these ages and believed she could somehow help her spawn. At first, she asked that it take the place of the Hollow Knight and then offered it a fragment of the King Soul Charm, her part in the union between herself and the Pale King. For the second fragment of the King Soul Charm, the Knight travelled to the ancient basin and location of the missing White Palace. Having awoken the Dream Nail with so much essence, the Knight entered a dream realm within a fallen King's Mold. Within, the knight found itself in the White Palace. The royal retainers here were unaware that their king had fallen. They waited for his return. These were the lucky few who had survived the onslaught and infection of the Radiance. As the knight climbed this holy place and evaded its dangers, it discovered the body of its father on his throne. The Pale King held the other part of the King's Soul Charm in his hand. Both parts of the charm slammed together and formed back into the King's Soul. With it, the Knight followed the charm's guidance into the Abyss. Right at the bottom, surrounded by the countless bodies of its siblings, the Knight discovered a new pathway that the King's Soul had opened up for it. It was in this place that the vessel entered the birthplace, where it had been born, where it had died, and then began its journey. The little ghost avoided the strikes of the shades who lingered in this place and came across a shiny black egg that offered a reflection of this poor, unfortunate creature. Upon a strike with the dream nail, the knight had a vision, a vision of the past. How it had climbed its way out of the abyss just as the Pale King had chosen a vessel as the Hollow Knight. How it had fallen into a death pit below. This vision showed it what it was, that these shades were its siblings, and that it was essentially a failed experiment created to save a kingdom. Having learned the truth, the King's soul was engulfed with Void and transformed into the Void Heart, a charm that unified the Void under the Knight's will. As the Knight travelled to the Temple of the Black Egg, it was greeted by Hornet. 
she explained that she would not join it inside as the structure had been built to sustain vessels if she were to enter. The bindings inside would drain her. She stated that while she would not risk her own life in the initial battle against the Hollow Knight, she would aid her sibling if the moment presented itself. Just as Hornet had promised, during the battle between the Knight and the Hollow Knight, she jumped in just as the Radiance infected vessel fell weak and she retained it so that the Knight could finish it off. During this struggle, the Hollow Knight knocked Hornet down and she fell unconscious. In these moments, the Knight defeated the Hollow Knight and it focused and absorbed everything that the Hollow Knight was and became the new vessel. Just as quickly as this had occurred, the Knight was chained within and the Temple of the Black Egg was sealed, sealed with Hornet as a dreamer, trapped inside with the knights. Hornet had become an unwilling dreamer as her sibling had followed through with the ultimate plan of the Pale King. In that critical moment in which Hornet held the Hollow Knight at bay, the knight did not strike it down. Instead, it struck the creature with the awoken dream nail and entered the dream realm. It was in here that the knight came face to face with the moth of light it had been crafted to contain. Only it would not contain the beast, it would destroy it. In a brutal battle, the knight fought with the Radiance in all her glory. It evaded her powerful attacks and weakened her, strike by strike. Having unified the Void under its will, the Void entered this dream with the knight. So too did the Hollow Knight in its shade form, weakened by its ancient enemy. The Radiance was restrained as the vessel broke free of its form and its shade lashed out repeatedly at the Radiance. This entity of light, brighter than essence, was beaten and destroyed as the light inside of her bled out. Then her body was dragged by the void into the darkness. The sacrifice of the vessel had destroyed the very light that had plagued Hallow Nest. In going against its father's plan, the population would dream no more of the Radiance. It had broken the cycle. As Hornet woke up, she saw the shattered mask of her sibling. She also saw that the Black Egg was gone. Hallow Nest was free. Deep down in the abyss, the shades of the children of the King and Queen of Hallow Nest were finally free to rest and they returned to the void. While the knight had destroyed the three seals of the dreamers and had collected the void heart, instead of traveling to the black egg, it explored the royal waterways a little more. Inside, it came across the junk pit and the cocoon sealed in chains. With a key, the knight freed the Godseeker trapped inside, picked up the god tuner it dropped, and entered its mind with the dream nail. Instantly, the Godseeker was insulted that something as puny as the knight had entered her realm. She sought gods, not cringers. She believed the gods connected to Godhome would destroy the knight. Regardless of her thoughts, she watched as the knight attuned the gods of Hallow Nest to Godhome through ritual combat. Through each battle, each pantheon, the knight defeated these powerful entities and ascended the minds of itself and the godseekers. This allowed the knight to attune to and fight even stronger and more powerful gods. The Godseekers had come to Hallow Nest to find the God of Gods. They wished to bask in its power. The Knight rose high in this godly coliseum and attuned to the mind of the Hollow Knight itself. Only in Godhome, it was viewed as the Pure Vessel. The defeat of the Pure Vessel had an interesting effect. It elevated the realm of Godhome and allowed the Godseekers to discover the most powerful of the gods, or it allowed the God of Gods to discover them, the Absolute Radiance. 
In this series of ritual combat, Godholm had connected to the dream realm of the trapped Radiance, and she wanted to fight. In another battle between two very powerful entities, the knight fought with the Absolute Radiance, only as the one who had unified the Void, the knight brought this darkness into the dream and conflict with it. As the battle came to an end, the night shell shattered and its shade fell into the void. From the darkness below, void tendrils latched onto the radiance as a large shade entity emerged from the shadows. Dubbed the Shade Lord, anything about this entity is completely unknown. Whether the knight transformed into it as a result of its ability to attune the gods, or whether it had simply waited in the abyss for its time to strike, is up to your interpretation. Still, the Shade Lord ripped open the mouth of the creature of light and struck it until it exploded into essence. The destruction of Absolute Radiance at the top of God Home had several effects. Within this dream realm created by the God Seekers through pure focus, Void flooded from the clouds as the Shade Lord, or a Void given focus, flew across this domain. From her throne, the God Seeker watched as this entity, a god of gods, took over her realm. She embraced the void as it destroyed her realm and its tendrils wrapped around her face and into her eyes. In Hallow Nest, in the Junk Pit, Void poured out of the God Seeker's physical form and tendrils slashed out aggressively. She had encountered what she had sought, but it had come at the cost of her life. High above at the Temple of the Black Egg, Hornet looked around in confusion as the vines of infection around this region lost their power. The Radiance had been defeated somehow, and the infection had died, but the Knight had not entered the Black Egg. It had completed its task, but from afar. However, from the Egg, Hornet heard the stomps and chains of the Hollow Knight. It was no longer afflicted by the plague of the Radiance, but it still appeared to be aggressive. So she prepared her needle. If the knight had given the physical body of the Godseeker a delicate flower from Zemur before its battle with Absolute Radiance, these events would have played out slightly differently. The knight would have still defeated Absolute Radiance in exactly the same way. Hornet would have still noticed that the knight had stopped the infection and she would have still encountered the Hollow Knight. The difference here was that when the Void attacked the Godseeker in Godhome, and in turn, travelled through her into the physical world, the delicate flower would have reacted interestingly upon contact with just a drop of Void. The flower flashed brightly, and in this moment, the Godseeker and Void around disappeared completely. All that remained was the flower. Whether this banished the whole void of this land is unknown. The knight had met so many interesting bugs on his journey. One of them was the Herald, of which the Mushroom tribe spoke of, Mr. Mushroom. Throughout its exploration of the many stunning regions of Hallow Nest, the knight had encountered Mr. Mushroom seven times, and having worn the Spore Shroom charm, it had been able to understand the mushroom, but all it heard was riddles and mumbles. Even now, this entity is shrouded in so much mystery. He knew that worms pulled bugs into their thrall, developed kingdoms, and as the ages passed, they fell. He was the Herald, a symbol of the passing of an age. Regardless of which path the knight followed, and how it changed Hallow Nest, Mr. Mushroom decided it was time to go. He spoke of sandy lands, vast, ancient kingdoms, that Hallow Nest was not the first, and that it would not be the last to fall. As Mr. Mushroom launched into the sky on his way to a new kingdom, an age 
came to an end. Despite which ending the knight arrived at, Halonest was changed forever. The Radiance was either contained or destroyed completely, and the territories across this land would be free to rebuild. The Moskin would continue to wait for Un to call them back to a dream. The Mantis would defend their village with aggression, and the Beasts of Deepnest would attempt to return to a time before their king had died and their queen had volunteered her mind. With many new adventurers and explorers having arrived in Hallownest during its period of stasis, these bugs could either simply explore a fallen kingdom or help rebuild it. The fate of Hallownest truly is up to you, the player, and your choice of how the night's journey came to an end. Yet, if the Embrace the Void ending was considered true canon, then it would appear that Hallownest would be under attack from another force, Void. After the Void Beast travelled through the mind of the Godseeker, the only weapon to stop it, light or a delicate flower. Team Cherry have stated that the canon ending is up to the player's choosing. However, with the Hollow Knight sequel on the way, it would suggest that the second ending, Sealed Siblings, cannot be canon in any sense as Hornet leaves Hallownest and travels to Farloom, a kingdom ruled and haunted by silk and song, dedicated to faith and pilgrimage. As of now, the fate of Hallownest is of your choosing. I have loved exploring Hollow Knight and Hollow Nest over the past few months. As you can see, I haven't posted a video in a couple of weeks because the research for this timeline was so time consuming and extensive. It was also completely worth it. This is one of the best stories I have explored and I cannot wait for Silk Song to come out so that I can explore another kingdom from the minds of Team Cherry. This video would not have been possible without Scarab, a mod manager, and these mods right here. The Pale Court mod was also incredibly useful to see what other fans envisioned the five great knights of Hallowness to look like before its fall, and how they fought. I did my best to put this timeline into a chronological order, but with the way the story is told, it was pretty difficult to get it perfect, so I put the events in an order that made the most sense. The dreamers can also be killed in any order, I think, but the order I put them in just made sense for the telling of this story. Normally, when I do these longer in-depth timelines, I try to answer every question that I think of when I explore a world, but for Hollow Knight, I think I am okay with just wondering. Was Mr. Mushroom really a god? What was he? How did the Pale King die? The bodies of King's Moles who guarded his throne suggest he was murdered. How did the Void kill many bugs out in Hallownest? These are mysteries I am happy to just accept as mysteries. On a final note, I did want to add every story and bug I could into this timeline, but I did not just want to list things that happened or could happen in Hallownest. The Fluke Balm, each individual warrior dream and Steel Soul Jin are also interesting, but I found telling every story would just have bloated the video. I'm sure Mossbag has probably covered them anyway. If you enjoyed this timeline, just go ahead and like the video and subscribe for more content like this. Share it with other people who like Hollow Knight. I hate doing these calls to actions, but I did put a lot of time into this video. Finally, I would like to thank my Gold Tier Patrons and Channel Members, Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, ChickenGuy791, Ruben Mendoza, Duke, Toadnut, Orin X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, BG Games, Apravis, Arnis, Blades of Glory, Cole Sherman, Yoli Rodriguez, Nabar, and 501st Clone Boy. What did you think of Hollow Knight? Which ending do you consider to be canon? And what would you like me to cover next? Let me know in the comments below. This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.